Good morning, good morning. It's the day after resurrection. It's Monday. Anybody out there? I know some people were thinking that we will not have devotion this morning because it's a public holiday. Um, but I guess that's also because some people think that public holidays, uh, they see devotion as work. Yvonne, I'm glad you're on. Mrs. Grage, thank you. I was saying that some people thought that we will not have devotion today, but again, I, I personally believe that they thought so because unfortunately, some people see devotion as work. <laughs> see prayer as work. So I've seen how when people are on holiday, uh, even their, their prayer time, hello, Mrs. Grage, uh, even their prayer time is suspended, their Bible reading time is suspended, and I've always marveled at that. You, we, if, 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 if prayer for us is still is work, excuse me, prayer for us is work, reading the Bible is work, then something needs to be done about our relationship with God. It, it means our relationship with God is not yet fun. You see, I'm married, I've been married now for 17 years, and talking to my wife is not seen as work. I don't, I, I'm not, when I'm on holiday, I, I don't need a holiday from her. I don't know about those those couples that think about how they want to go on holiday, but they need a holiday for themselves. They need a holiday alone. I don't know. Maybe that's what works for them. For me, when when I need a holiday, I need to take my wife with me. It, it, it's amazing. I might not even be talking with her. You know, I'm so bad that even when I'm going away to pray, if I can take her with me, I take her with me. There is just something about having her in that room next door. She's not talking to me. She's not but I know she's there, I know she's fine, I know she's with me. There's just something about that for me. It's not, anyway, what I'm saying is I don't see it as work. And we need to come to the place where our relationship with, 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 with the Lord is not seen as work. Because it isn't work. I, I also suspect that I think because a lot of times our devotions are primarily one-sided, our devotions are primarily one-sided, and so we is monotonous. You're, you're talking uh, to the Lord, and He's not talking back. Um, you are the only one talking, and so it gets rather monotonous. And I can understand if if that's the way your relationship with the Lord has been, it really can get boring, and it really can seem like work. Also, I suspect that some people, um, again, their relationship feels like work because they. They have a script that they work with when they want to pray. So you start with Thanksgiving. You know, you for some you start with repentance, then you go to Thanksgiving, then you go to to petitions, uh, then you go to you know, and 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 and, and you add again with another Thanksgiving. And so, because our relationship with God has become very scripted, um, very uh, very structured, uh, it. it Boring. And once it's boring, we're no longer able to enjoy that devotion with God. Um, my, my, my time of devotion is scripted, but it's only scripted as far as there is a time of devotion. I hope you understand that. There is a time of devotion, and that's what makes it scripted. But the content of the devotion is not as scripted. Okay, I must admit, there is also a what should be done, uh, you know, but, but not necessarily. For example, I, I taught you last week about the switch technique. So I follow the switch technique, you know. There is a place for reading the Word. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for reading a, a godly book. There is a place for reading, in quote, a secular book. Um, so I script it that way, but my actual communion with the Lord is not scripted at all. What I say, what I start with, if, 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 if I'm going to have that private time, because we should always be talking with him, but if I'm going to have that private time with him, in case you're wondering where we're starting, we've started already. If I'm going to have that private time with him, you know, where I'm putting everybody out, I'm closing the door, it's just myself and him. If I'm going to do that, it, it's not scripted. The time might be scripted, but the activity itself is not. And so I end up, sometimes I do start with Thanksgiving. You know, a lot of times I don't. I just go into the meat of the day. Uh, but I always ensure, no matter what, I still um, um, praise him and I worship him no matter what. Uh, but, but what I start with, how I end, uh, it's very dynamic, you know. I get into that space and I immediately start with something like, 
okay, why were you emphasizing this scripture uh, to me when I was reading your word? You, you really put a spotlight on my heart leaped when I read Ephesians, blah, blah. Um, what's up with that? What did you want to say um, concerning that? Or I go into, um, Lord, you know that today I heard so, 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 or you know the whole of today I've been feeling X, Y, and Z. And I just go into it, you know. Uh, the whole routine, a uh, very structured routine that we, we we follow when we spend time with Kim poses a problem for a number of us. And so it becomes so monotonous. It becomes so regimented and, and, and so unenjoyable. I promise you, it becomes so unenjoyable. Um, uh, and we need to change that. We really need to change that. One thing that I always ensure that I do, though, is sometimes when, I, when, when, when I'm spending time with him, Again, we should always be with him. So as I'm talking to you, I'm with him. When, I, when I'm done and I, I, I sit at my desk to do some work, I'm with him. When I'm with my son as he's playing PlayStation, I'm with him. Um, so we are always with him. But I'm talking about when you separate a specific time onto him. If it's always regimented, if the way you go about it, it's always scripted, you will be born. But one thing I always ensure, no matter what I start with, because sometimes I find myself starting with a petition, because I, I, I've come to that place with a heavy burden on my heart, either for myself or for somebody else. And I, I go straight there. I start there. But the key here is I always ensure that no matter what I start with, I always ensure that there is always a thanksgiving. There is always a praise. I always ensure that because it is so easy to get caught up in the worries of today, in the pressures of now, in, in present crisis that you forget the things that he has done. And, it, and, 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 and that's what Thanksgiving praise and worship is about. You remember what he has done. You, appre you, you appreciate him for all that he has accomplished in your life and who he is. But also one of the things that that also does for you is it keeps your heart from entering into depression. You see, when you enter, when you begin to engage with him and you are overwhelmed with you are overwhelmed with the crisis. You can find yourself, even though you are praying and you are saying the right words, but it's coming from a heart of depression. It's coming from a heart of frustration. Have you been there before where you're trying to talk with God and and you, you, you end up, uh, your, your comments to him, your statements to him are not born in faith. They're not born out of a, a, a child reaching out to an almighty father. They're actually one of a complainant or maybe sometimes even a defendant. And you know, you come there and you are accusing and, and, and you make it come out like that. But but in the end, when you switch into Thanksgiving, you, you find yourself um, reclining and building your faith again, reminding yourself. So that, that, that whole process of praise, worship, Thanksgiving is not to appease the ego of God. Oh, no, not at all. If you never thanked God, you will lose. He loses nothing. Do you know if you never thank God and all, every time you came to talk to him, all you did was, was put your petition on the table. Do you know it doesn't bother him? Some people think it actually bothers God. God is not egotistical. Oh, please understand that. You can't look. The admonition that we should praise him, worship him and thank him, particularly when you try to understand it in the new covenant, is for your benefit and mine and not for his. He doesn't get upset if you never thank him. If you never thank him for the rest of your life, he will still answer your prayer. If you never thank him for the rest of your life, he will still heal you if you are sick and you ask him to heal you. I need you to appreciate that. He actually will. He doesn't answer your prayer because you gave him thanks. He answers your prayer because you came in the name of Jesus. He, he answers your prayer because you laid hands on the sick and so they recovered. He doesn't answer your prayer because you, you, you gave him thanks. Again, he's not egotistical. We give him thanks and we give him praise primarily because you require it. There is something that praise and worship and thanksgiving does. And this is not my, my word for today, but the, the word it gave me for today. It, it, it releases the pressure. It releases a sense of depression. It can actually break you out of depression, break you out of frustration. And so, uh, and, 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 and praise, worship, thanksgiving is also a release of your faith, particularly when you do it in a time of crisis, when you are in a bad mood, you're in a bad state, you're under pressure, something is about to happen or may not happen and, and, and it's throwing you off and you choose in that scenario to give him praise, to give him worship, to give him thanks. Do you know you are releasing a lot of faith? And when you release a lot of faith, this is powerful, when you release a lot of faith, every 
has ever done for us, will ever do to us, in us, for us, through us, is against the backdrop of faith. And so praise, worship, thanksgiving is one of the most accurate releases of faith as long as speaking in tongues it's one of the most accurate releases of faith and so again um, and of course when you release your faith and then you, you are able to take hold of that which god has really made available so the point here is um, but what is the point i'm really trying to make the fact that we don't script come into the house of god and and don't make it don't make it so boring um begin to train yourself to hear him as well uh, your time with him cannot be monotonous you need to be able to hear him believe me when the scripture says that he does nothing except he first reveals it to the prophet. It doesn't mean everything perfect, uh, but he does want to reveal things to your life before they occur and begin to prepare you. That you might not even know that that's what he was preparing you for, but it begins to prepare you for the event. And then when the event is occurring, it reminds you. Remember, I just told you this. I have been taking you through. And you go, oh my goodness, oh, is that what this was about? Or sometimes it even gets a lot more specific. But that only happens when we ensure that we spend our time with him. Now, let me bring you into a conversation I had with him on Saturday. So, close the door. Um, my, my, my daughter was asking that it was time to exercise, but we had delayed, so I couldn't join them in exercise. So, I decided to devote that time and just spend time with Jesus. And so, after I, I, I thanked him and, and we talked about some of the things I was really grateful for, I stopped myself in the middle of our conversation. This is when I was talking to Jesus. And I said to him, Okay, um, look at all the things I'm grateful for. See how far you've brought us. But, but I need to stop here and, and just say, how are you doing? How are you feeling? You see, um, I can ask Jesus how he's feeling. I, I won't ask God how he's feeling. Um, I don't have to explain that's the Father. I won't ask the Father how he's feeling per se, but I will ask Jesus how he's feeling. Uh, maybe in time I'll, I will explain the difference between because you see, but they are one and the same. They're one and the same, but but one one of them. And he is still man. He is not a man like you and I now, but he is still the man Christ. He stands in prayer on our behalf as you and I. Um, so I asked him um, how he was doing. And oh boy, I wasn't ready for his response. His response just, just overwhelmed me. And, and I had to say to him, okay, with, with all that you are saying, what do you want me to do? What can I do? How, how do I, how do I, how do I meet you there? How, how do I, I don't want to use the word help you, but I guess that's the right word. How do I help you? Uh, you say, how can a mortal man help an immortal God? Oh, you can, because I've told you before, an immortal God is limited to what he can do in the realms of mortal men. He needs the agreement with mortal men to do things on the earth. Again, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. Someone is saying, I'm breaking up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with my internet. Um, I, I, if somebody else mentioned, is, is, is it breaking? That's the connection. Is it breaking? And maybe it's my internet. I'm not sure what to do about that now. Um, so, so, so let me tell you what he said. When we spoke, he said to me, you are asking me how I'm feeling. Okay, let me explain. Then he quoted a few scriptures. He said, remember, I am touched with the feeling. Um, yes, my wife just mentioned as well that the internet is misbehaving. Um, uh, I'm a bit concerned now. It says the internet is misbehaving. I can't stop and reset. Uh, so I am just going to, uh, what do I do on, uh, with circumstances like this? Okay, uh, Rosalind just said it's clearer now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try and just continue. Hopefully it stays like that. We speak your word to it. Work in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, he said, he, he then began to throw a few words at me, a few scriptures. He said, remember, I am moved with the feelings of your infirmity. I said, okay, yes, I do understand that. He now said, okay. Are you aware of the number of people that have died globally because of this pandemic? Said, yeah, in Africa, a lot of you have become insulated so far from it. And we trust God that it's not so far. We're insulated permanently, period, because of it, um, um, from it. But he said, look at the global death that has occurred in the last three months. 
we're talking about tens of thousands, tens of thousands. At this rate, we will enter into hundreds of thousands. He said, look at the global death that has occurred as a result of the pandemic. He said, are you aware of how many of them are not born again and so are currently in hell? He said, these are individual that I, individuals that I died for. Are you aware of how many that are actually born again that have died? And in as much as it is always better for them to be with me, said, but they have died prematurely. The assignment that they were supposed to perform has been cut short um, prematurely. And, and, and they are now with me and, and, and there is a vacuum. Said, I hope you appreciate that the people, the, my, my children that have died before their time uh, or are currently sick and dying, irrespective of their ages, they are my body. And I need us to appreciate this. Do you know, I keep talking about us being the literal body of Christ. I need you to see it as, I, I'm not exaggerating. When Jesus was talking to me, he, he was emphasizing. When Kenny came back to the room to join me, I had to say to her that, you know, Jesus is saying, is reiterating that we are his literal body. Remember what he said to, oh, I feel him all over here. Remember what he said to Paul. When Paul was going around, he had just officiated um, the death of Stephen and he was going around with certificates or, or licensing to arrest and maybe even kill other Christians. When Jesus accosted him, Jesus said, why do you persecute me? Paul said, who are you that I'm persecuting? And the response of Jesus was, you are persecuting the, Christ, the believers, you are persecuting me. Did you get, from Jesus' perspective, he didn't say, why are you persecuting my brothers, my sisters? Why are you persecuting my He said, why are you persecuting me? Because we are actually the literal body of Jesus. Again, this is why when you stretch forth your hand to the sick, they get healed. Do you know why they get healed? They get healed because you are the literal body of Jesus. You are the literal body of Christ. You are actually his literal body. So he said, when my children are falling sick all over the world, and, and many thousands of them have died, I have, I have died again. My, my body is, is under attack. My body has come under attack. And, 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 and then again, he emphasized those who are not born again. He said, I died not for the sins of the believers. I died and paid the price, the ultimate price for the sins of the whole world. I died that the whole world might live. Now that is unbelievable. He said, he died that the whole world will live. And, and yet we see people in the world that have been dying. Again, those that don't know him. And he says, my heart is grieved. And, and, and that is possible because the Bible also talks about how we shouldn't grieve the Holy Ghost. And, and he began to say, so my heart is grieved. There are people that know me, that don't know me, that are going straight to hell. I said, okay, okay, what can I do? I've been doing what I could. I was asking, what more can I do? During the spirit, I've, I've, I've been leading people to Christ. I have been reaching out to people. So I've been doing what I could. And I, I asked him, so, so what can I do? And his response was, you need, oh, I, I, I feel, I'm feeling again his burden. He said, will you tell those who will join in that they should engage their circles again and do two things? Number one, pray for the salvation of the lost. And then number two, that they should, they should um, reach out, evangelize. I know you've heard this, uh, telling believers that they need to win the loss, telling believers that they need to heal the sick, telling believers that they need to pray, telling believers that they need to read the word, is no longer novel, and so a lot of believers, it falls on deaf ears because you've always heard this, you always know this, and I know, I know, I'll get, I'll get through to it. Um, but there is a reality before us, the body of Christ is under attack. Jesus said, you ask me how I am feeling. You know, I, I, at some point, I, I wish I didn't ask you, you know, um, because I became so overwhelmed. And, and he says, do two things. Will you tell my people that they should pray for the salvation of the lost and teach them how? And then number two, he said, they should reach out 
to the lost in their circle. I said, how? How did he do that? And his response was simple. And so for the rest of the week, um, I suspect what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to teach us. I'm, I'm going to try and show us things that we could do. How do you pray for the lost? You, you can't be praying for the lost and saying, Lord, I ask that you will save them. Uh, that, that, uh, and no wonder when we pray like that, people are not getting saved. You can't pray, oh, God, save them. Oh, God, save them. I, I, was, I attended a prayer meeting where we were all on the floor back then. We didn't know it a lot. And we're on the floor, we're kneeling down, we're crying, oh God, save the lost, oh God, save them, oh God, save them. If you won't save them, then let us die here. And I'm sure the Lord was watching us and he was laughing. Uh, at some point, he will probably be watching us and he will be grieving because he'll be saying, uh, you are, you're, you're asking me to save them as if I'm crying, as if I am holding back from saving them and you want them saved more than I want them saved. So I have proven how much I want them saved. I died to prove that I want them saved. And so when you're praying for the salvation of the lost, you do not apostle mighty man. I know this will touch your heart because you are a strong evangelist. I know it will. Thank you for tuning in. Um, when you're praying for the lost, you do not cry out, oh God, save them. He, he did. He died on the cross. Men are not going to hell because they are not saved. Men are, let me qualify that, men are going to hell. Men are not going to hell because salvation has not been made available. Uh, men are going to hell because they have rejected salvation. Men are going to hell because they have not accepted the salvation of God. And so asking God to save them is a redundant prayer. Uh, he could then move on, on the, the release of our faith and then give us direction and move. But we can be a bit more accurate in how we pray for the salvation of the lost. And then how do we reach out to the lost in, in, in a lockdown? How do we? We are going to be looking at some things that we could do in this lockdown uh, for as long as there is a lockdown and even post the lockdown, things that we could do to reach out to the lost. But for today, can I advocate something? Let me advocate. I am going to be posting, starting from today, I'm going to be posting certain things on my timeline that's on the page. I'll probably copy it pages as well and the pur what, what the purpose of it is to just draw the attention of people who are just scrolling to their need for salvation and you could do the same can we use this week to reach out to the lost um we can start with and so you post something like um are you before you scroll past quick question are you born again um if not reach out to me I could tell you how, just something like that, you know, and, and all these various permutations. Um, I just throw out week, every day of this week, throw out two, three. Do you know if you if you try to, my wife says it's breaking up again. She says, I'm breaking up. I'm not breaking up. It is the internet that's breaking up. I will never break up in Jesus' name. If we if we use, let me just, you can then rewind. Please rewind and watch again the areas that you missed. We can then use our timelines it out there and ask people uh, to and draw people's attention to salvation. At least for some of us that are afraid, some of us that are too unduly shy, too embarrassed to reach out one on one to individuals, we will address. At least this is something you can do. It is. It is your wall. You can use your wall as a platform, and I'm asking that. Use your wall as God's platform for this week. I will post some things. You can just copy um, and post it as yours. Don't just forward it. Post it as yours or create yours. Jesus is is Jesus is feeling the death in his body. Jesus is feeling the death in the world. We can do something about it. We can do something about the deaths through prayer and do something about those going to hell through, through evangelism. We can ease the burden of Jesus. He is. People say, no, Jesus is standing before God. He doesn't have a burden. No, he does. He says his burden might be light. His yoke might be easy, but there is a burden that he carries. And he's saying, carry my burden with me. He's actually saying, carry my burden with me and I'm hoping that you will hear him and um, today I have not 
you know, let me read at least one scripture so it doesn't look like I didn't quote the scripture. First Timothy chapter two verse four. It's one of the scriptures that he threw at me as I closed this. First Timothy two verse four says, um, "Let me take it. Let me take it from verse one to four. Okay, First Timothy two from verse one. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead." a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our Savior. Now look at verse 4. He's talking here about our praying. But he says all of that is good. So that verse 4, he says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? It is God's desire that all men will be saved. People have argued and said, um, whatever God wants to happen will happen. That is not true. Some people have actually taught that whoever God has already predestined to be saved is who will be saved. I really can't go into the nitty gritty of that, but that can't be true because if that is the case, then the people cannot be held accountable for their actions. Then choice is an illusion. And choice is, from God's perspective, choice is a real thing, it's not an illusion. But verse four says that God's desire is that all men will be saved. And so whenever there is a man that is not saved that dies, it grieves his heart because he desires that all men will be saved. He proved it by dying on the cross. So let me encourage you. Today, use your wall to evangelize. Today, lift your voice in prayer. I'll teach you tomorrow how do you pray for someone to be saved. There is an art. There is a scriptural skill in praying for someone to be saved. And every time I have prayed like that, which is all the time, I see people saved. You know, um, and, and I will teach you that from tomorrow. But I really want to encourage you, right? Let us put our shoulders to the plow with him. Remember the Bible says that we are co-laborers. If we are co-laborers with him, watch this. If you and I are co-laborers with Jesus, it means, a co-laborer means we're working on the same thing. That's what it means. If we are co-laborers, then we have to be working on the same thing. As much as we have Jesus working on the things that plague us uniquely. He's working on the things that trouble you personally. He also needs you to work on the things that are a burden to him, that are a concern to him. Let's not just use him to meet our needs. God has needs. First Timothy 2 verse 4 tells us the need of God, that all men will be saved and will come to the knowledge of him, that you will be his co-laborer to get that done. Um, I'm out of time. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, I thank you for our time in your presence. Um, I understand that for many of us, Spirit of God, the whole concept of soul winning does not elicit the kind of emotion and passion that it should. Spirit of God, for those that are listening and have stayed listening till this point, they are listening because they want to carry your burden with you. I speak to all our hearts. For those that are listening now, those that will listen, let it be a stirring of heart. Let it be a quickening of our hearts. Let us feel the burden for the lost again. Let our hearts break for the, by the things and break with the things that cause. We are one with you that we will feel what you feel even as you feel what we feel. We receive wisdom right now to deal, to currently deal with the pandemic, to deal with the deaths, to deal with those who are going to hell, to deal with those who are not saved, to deal with those who are saved that are dying prematurely. We put our hands to the plow. We put our hands in yours. We receive divine wisdom to know what to do. I pray for everybody else who is going through a tough time. I release the power of God where you are. The burden of the moment will not overwhelm you. I declare that the grace of God is multiplied unto all of you, those watching and listening now, and those that will supplic supplic sus subsequently watch and listen. I release the grace of God to help you. I will command the burden to be lifted. Be healed. Be restored in your heart and mind and soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for your time. Please 
like we've just I've just mentioned and I'm hoping you've agreed with me use your timeline today this week if not going forward to evangelize somebody will see it remember it is what we give God that he will work with you give him your voice he will speak through you stretch forth your hand to pray for somebody he will heal through you um, use your timeline to preach to somebody he will save somebody through you they might never come back to you to tell you that your timeline helped them but 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 it was an instrument that you put in the hands of God guess what he'll use it so I'm saying give him your instrument today give him that timeline today let him use it um, use your cell phone to reach somebody else today let him use it God bless you have a wonderful um, again, I don't like saying Easter. I don't know where that, that Easter thing gets to me, um, but no big deal. So I will say, um, happy um, day after resurrection. Enjoy your holidays this Monday. God bless you. Bye for now.